doing this interview. My pleasure. Uh, I wanted to start with uh, the reason why you are here, uh, the conference. It's annual here in Riga, Latvia. So could you elaborate on your speech that you will give uh, later on today? And uh, my question exactly was, what do you want Latvia to hear? What is the main message? Well, I think that the main message is that, uh, you know, we have to increase productivity in Europe. We are lagging behind in comparison with the evolution of the, of the US. Uh, this is something, uh, you know, similar to the message that was conveyed huh, in the Draghi's and Letas reports. And uh, the reason why, you know, we are lagging behind is lack of, uh, of investment. Productivity, at the end of the day, determines potential growth. Potential growth is, uh, you know, is going to be the main determinant of welfare in the medium term. So if we are lagging behind, uh, uh, this will be, you know, a problem in the future. That's why, you know, the main message is that we should try to improve investment. We should try to, uh, to increase the volume of investment, both private and public. We should try to, to, to find ways to finance this increase in investment. And simultaneously, uh, the main reason, uh, you know, we are lagging behind at the end of the day is that we do not have, you know, a complete uh, monetary, economic and monetary union. And, uh, you know, that's the main message. If we want to, to reach the gap with the U.S., we will need, uh, you know, to close, uh, you know, the gaps that we have now in terms of the economic and monetary union. Mm -hmm. uh, going into more specific topics um, about the rates, obviously, that's one of the most important questions for ECB. Uh, the annual inflation in Eurozone was already like 1.8% uh, yesterday. There were uh, Eurostat uh, data. Uh, can we say that the fight against inflation is over? Well, it's not totally over. I think that, you know, the trajectory of inflation is quite good. We can, you know, just to remember that only two years ago, uh, the inflation rate in Europe was uh, above 10%, even higher in the case of, uh, of Latvia. And now, you know, it's uh, a little bit below 2%. So the trajectory has been quite positive. Nevertheless, there are some factors that we have to monitor, mainly the evolution of services inflation. Services inflation is, uh, is uh, decelerating, but is uh, now around uh, 4%. And this is an element that we have to, 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 to look at very carefully, because it could be, you know, the main obstacle that we, we, can, we can confront in the near future in order to continue with the deceleration of inflation. The big banks are already predicting that you are going to lower the rates in October. Do you see it as a possibility? Well, we have said very clearly that, uh, you know, we are totally open, that, uh, you know, we, we want to maintain our optionality, you know, as open and as wide as possible. The data that we have received in terms of inflation in September is quite good. It has been a positive surprise. So the governing council will have to analyze that, you know, in, in, in our next uh, monetary policy governing council meeting. And we will see, you know, how, you know, this uh, evolution of inflation gives rise to a continuation of the process of this inflation. But, uh, you know, if you look at the three elements that we are going to consider, you know, the transmission of monetary policy, the issue of uh, core inflation and the evolution and the, you know, how, uh, how, uh, how rapidly we are going to, to be uh, and the inflation is going to turn to, 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 to our target of price stability, that is 2%, I think that, uh, you know, we are in the right direction. So far, you have done only uh, 0.25 twice, but still uh, only going by, by, I don't know, not so uh, high levels or low levels. Uh, when the rates were raised, uh, you went uh, more faster. Um, do you see this also as a possibility that maybe in October, I don't know, maybe further, uh, you could move not only by 0.25, but also again by uh, 0.5? Well, you have to, to bear in mind that there is a huge level of uncertainty. And when there is a huge level of uncertainty, you have to be very careful with the decisions that you take. So I think that, uh, you know, 25 basis points or 0.25, as you have said, I think that is the, the correct, uh, the correct uh, steps is the correct step that we will have to, 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 to take so far. Um, here the question is not as much. We do not have any sort of predetermined path huh, in terms of the reduction of, uh, of rates, but given the uncertainty, given when you are in a dark room, you have to be very careful with the steps that you take. And in that respect, I think that 25 basis points is something that is, uh, you know, uh, is more prudent huh, than uh, other kind of actions. And you still consider the room to be dark, uh, not knowing the future, uh, living in a new geopolitical uh, reality. Uh, we saw what happened yesterday in Israel, for example. Uh, do you 
also consider things like these and would you say that we're living in new reality now? Well, you know, the geopolitical situation is something that is relevant because it's having, you know, uh, an impact on confidence and confidence is key for, you know, for economic agents. So, uh, well, uh, let's see what happens. You know, we have uh, several conflicts that are not very far away from, from Europe. We have uh, Ukraine and we have the Middle East. And, uh, you know, let's see what happens with the, the evolution of these conflicts. But, uh, you know, these are factors that have an, an impact on, 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 on uh, confidence and at the end of the day on the situation of uncertainty that we are going through. So uh, they are not mere economic uh, uh, elements, but, uh, you know, this, uh, this situation, this geopolitical environment is something that is very relevant for us. Another question which is relevant for ECB is uh, the balance between inflation and uh, economic growth. Uh, probably you get uh, asked this many times already, but um, do you think maybe ECB went too far? Because we see the inflation is very stable right now, but the economic growth, we know how it is. Well, our mandate is quite clear. Our mandate is price stability and, you know, the definition of price stability that we have is 2% symmetric in the medium term. So, uh, in the case of the Federal Reserve, for instance, you know, the mandate is dual. Huh? They, they, they have to look at both inflation and, 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 and growth. Nevertheless, uh, you have to bear in mind that we, when, we, when we look at, uh, you know, when we make our projections about uh, the evolution of inflation, uh, we consider, you know, uh, you know, uh, other uh, economic elements, the evolution of uh, aggregate demand, growth, the labor market, the exchange rate, because all these elements have an influence on, on inflation. So, but, uh, you know, our target, I repeat, is, uh, is, uh, is inflation. Simultaneously, uh, I think that you're right. I think that uh, now the situation of growth in Europe is, uh, you know, is, uh, is a situation of very low growth. Uh, risks are clearly tilted the downside. This is something that perhaps, you know, in the second half of the year, our impression is that the growth rate uh, will be below, uh, you know, growth rates in the first half of the year. In the, in the first quarter was 0.3, in the second quarter was uh, point, point 0.2. So uh, we believe that, uh, you know, the second half of the year, perhaps, you know, the drivers of growth are going to start to, you know, to, 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 to decline and that uh, the growth rate in the second half of the year will be below the, the, the growth rate in the first half of the year. This is something that we will have to take into consideration because this is going to have an impact as well on inflation. Given the main mandate uh, of ECB, do you think um, governing council going forward should look also at the economic growth, I don't know, as the main factor, uh, given inflation is really low right now? Uh, maybe you should like prioritize it? Can you prioritize? No, no, because we have a mandate. The mandate is in the treaty, and we have to follow, you know, the, our 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 mandate. And uh, you know, that's quite clear. But I repeat again, um, uh, inflation uh, depends on several factors, and one of the factors is economic growth. How it, the aggregate demand is evolving, and aggregate demand now is very is uh, declining. Is really, you know, is quite subdued. Uh, here, what we expect is that uh, you know uh, the recovery in the short-term uh, real income, real revenues of households will give rise to an increase in consumption. But this is something that we have not seen so far. And perhaps it's uh, not because, uh, well, uh, re real disposable income in the short term is on the rise, but I think that there are, there are other elements that are now, you know, having an impact on the confidence of the, of the consumers, of the households. Uh, so these are structural factors. Uh, economists, uh, we say that, uh, you know, the, the evolution of consumption depends at the end of the day on the permanent income. That is a concept that takes into consideration not only, you know, the short-term evolution of the revenues of households, it takes into consideration as well what might happen in the near future. And in that respect, I think that the lack of confidence of households now is, uh, you know, having an impact and really reducing, you know, the consumption of the, of the European households. Why would you say EU's economy is such as it is? And uh, do you see a small, big role of it also for the ECB? Well, uh, always, you know, economic, economic, monetary policy is very important and we have a very important say in that respect. Uh, you already mentioned a few things in your first uh, answer, but uh, how could we grow in this current situation? Well, I think that, you know, perhaps, you know, the main element or the main uh, you know, the main action that we should take is to complete uh, our economic and monetary union. We have a banking union that is not complete. 
We have a capital market union that uh, the progress has been quite limited. So even though we have a lot of savings in Europe, these savings are not directed to, to investment in Europe. Sometimes you know, they, are, they are deviated uh, to investment projects uh, overseas, and I think that this is not good. And simultaneously, I think that uh, you know, the single market and the completion of the single market is, 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 is key. Um, we need uh, you know, to integrate the economies, the national economies, in a sort of single market. Uh, you know, uh, a single country cannot do uh, all the things that are going to be needed in order to improve the performance of uh, you know, the European economy. The only way to do it is through a comprehensive uh, plan in order to, 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 ing to integrate the, the good and services markets and simultaneously to advance in the banking union and the capital, and the capital market union. Um, it's clear that we are lagging behind in that respect. We hope that the new commission uh, you know, will put a lot of emphasis on that because we believe that uh, you know, this is the main element in order to try to improve productivity, investment, and at the end of the day, the welfare of the, of the European society. Looking at the bigger picture than this, and uh, well, not maybe bigger, but at a different side of it, uh, we're also living in a new reality uh, considering uh, e-banking and all the technological stuff. Uh, how does ECB address that? Well, this is something that we have to take into consideration. Uh, remember what happened, you know, here we have to recall what happened to the regional banks in the, in the, in the US. You know, uh, uh, I think that the combination of digital, the digital banking uh, plus, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, social networks gave rise, you know, to a bank run with uh, you know a rapid rapidity that was uh, you know co not comparable to anything that happened in the past, so this is something that is quite uh, quite uh, quite obvious, and these are new elements that we have to bear in mind in order to deal with uh, the European banks. Never nevertheless, uh, I would say that the situation of the European banks now is good in terms of capital, in terms of liquidity on average, uh, profitability is on the rise because of the increase in interest rates. But we believe that the profitability of the European banks has reached uh, you know, a peak and now it's going to stabilize. Well, it has started to stabilize uh, now and uh, uh, it will start to decline a little bit over the next, uh, the next months. But the profitability, the return on equity of the European banks is much better than the levels that we had uh, you know, previous, prior to the, to, the, to the pandemic. Are there any other risks, also looking the, at the bigger picture here uh, in, in the future that you see? I don't know. For financial stability, for financial stability, I think that uh, the, valuation of the, the valuations of markets are very rich, are very high. They are, you know, discounting a very benign uh, scenario for, uh, you know, soft landing, uh, you know, a favorable uh, economic policy and these kind of things. And perhaps, you know, sometimes markets make mistakes. And simultaneously, uh, there is another element that we, we pay a lot of attention, that is commercial real estate. Commercial property, we have seen an important decline in prices. It was the combination of not only of the tightening of monetary policy, but as well uh, the situation of, uh, of uh, teleworking. And I think that, uh, you know, that could give rise to you know, problems, not, not, not so much for the European banks, but much, much more to the property funds uh, domiciled in Europe. Going back to rates and uh, to very, very base level. Uh, so the last question, I, I know the answer to it, but uh, still I wanted to ask why the 2% inflation has been set uh, historically as the golden standard? Well, it's the golden standard because, uh, you know, it's uh, the level that we believe that uh, will permit the economy to evolve uh, without creating any sort of imbalances. Imbalances in terms of competitiveness, imbalances in terms of economic growth. And I think that 2%, because if we go to zero, you can have you know, a situation that uh, you can have some countries in a de deflationary situation, and that's not, uh, that's not good, because that could have an impact on the evolution of, uh, of consumption. So 2%, I think that's the, the gold standard, as you have said. And, uh, well, it's the reference, uh, uh, and it's the definition of price stability everywhere. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much to you.